It was, um, well, a lot of different things, uh, sort of music and love and all of that. Um, but there had been a question that had sort of been inside of me for about seven or eight years, and it was, sort of, what would you do if you were in this position, um, sort of, sort of hovering between life and death, and you knew that something really catastrophic had happened to your family, and you could choose to go with them if you wanted to? Um, what would you do? And sort of out of the blue, one day, this, this character came into my mind, and I knew she was going to answer that question, and I could see her very clearly. She was 17 years old. She was um, very serious, very mature, and she was a cellist, which was kind of a shock, because I was not, I'm not a musician. I was not a fan of classical music, but I knew that it was very integral to who this girl was. She was a cellist, and that's when I started writing. And then it just kind of landed with the right people and the right time. And so Chloe came aboard and she was really, really into the character and she kind of stuck with it for a while. And then RJ came aboard as the director and he really just got it on such a deep cellular level. He gets the music, he gets the character, he gets the visual, he gets everything, the love story. And we had Allison, our wonderful producer who'd been there and then MGM, it all kind of came together. And then it happened really quickly. Um, and so it's, it's been just kind of amazing because once I met this group of people, I'm like, oh yeah, that, these, are, these are the people who are supposed to be doing this. And so it's sort of surreal, and then at the same time, it actually seems completely natural. When I started writing Mia, I was like, where is she coming from? Because I still talk like a 16-year-old valley girl, and this girl is more serious sounding than I am, but she's also a lot like a lot of 16-year-old girls or 17-year-old girls because she feels like a fish out of water. She doesn't feel like she belongs in her world. Her parents are these old punk rockers who kind of, her dad became a middle school teacher, now he wears a bow tie. But, you know, that's their background. Her brother's like, wants to be a drummer, he's a little rock and roll. And there's Mia, she's like very, very serious. And then there's her boyfriend, and he also comes from this sort of whole rock world. So she just feels a little bit like she's a Martian in her family. She knows they love her, but she doesn't quite feel like she fits in. And the, this cello is this thing that she's kind of obsessed with it, and it defines her. And she also hides behind it a little bit as well. So that's sort of a bit of a journey for her, which is sort of learning to kind of meld those two worlds. And falling in love with Adam is, is both incredibly romantic and wonderful, but also a little bit scary for her because it's such a big leap. Adam was really hard because he was so specific in my mind. And when I saw Jamie's audition, I was like, oh my God. They nailed it because it's a certain combination of swagger and vulnerability and a very certain look and then a very certain voice in terms of singing and he's got it. And in terms of the music, when people talk about sort of how the band sounds sort of early on, I'm like, kind of think of it as like poppy, punky, indie, East Bay sound. And I was just talking to Adam, who's the, one, the music producer, and that's exactly the sound of the band. I remember having a conversation from around 2010 saying, Chloe Morris is so talented, too bad she's too young. And you know, one of, one of the plus sides of it taking a couple years to sort of get together was that she, she grew to be the exact right age to play Mia. I think she's peerless. I just think that in terms of sort of young actresses out there right now, like there's Chloe and there's everybody else. I mean, she's just fantastic. I met him and he, pulled out the visual palette for the film and he was talking about it and he started talking to me about it in this like incredibly profound way and I I was sitting there in this coffee shop in Hollywood and I'm like don't cry don't you just met him do not cry so I waited until he left and then I started to cry because he just I knew the minute I met him when he said something about the book and just sort of about the spirituality in the book being everywhere I, I knew that he got it on such a deeply cellular level. I knew he was the right person. And Allison is just fantastic. I mean, Allison is the person who's just been here. She found RJ. She's the person who's kind of stuck with this and, and, and made it happen. And as they were casting it, like that was the sign. I'm like, every single person that they cast was so perfectly cast.